to the second lecture of the course in computer aided design and manufacturing my name is dr kumar sambha i am an associate professor at up institute of design noida so in the previous lecture we had talked about the role of computer in designing and we'll extend it further a bit and then we'll talk about computer graphics and the systems and hardware employed in terms of application of computer in designing and further we'll talk about graphics standards and the different types of geometric modeling software so if you look at the gradual development of computers so the initiation of computation took place in 1822 when charles babbage formulated his idea of mechanical computation so that was the first time when this word computation got into use and you can see that the computation was mechanical to begin with then in 1890 the punched card systems started being used right and that was developed by herman hollerith then in 1930 differential analyzers were developed at massachusetts institute of technology then there was some work on programmable computers which was published by alan turing he published a paper in which he talked about programmable computers then in 1946 the program storage concept and the reprogrammable computers by john von neumann came into light so this way gradually you can see how computation got developed and then the micro programmed architecture was developed by morris wilk in 1951 so this is the way the computation was gradually getting developed and simultaneously the hardware was also getting developed and innovations were taking place in terms of various aspects of the hardware so you can see that the hardware went through a revolution from electronic tubes to begin with then the transistors came into picture then we had semiconductors then we have integrated circuits and then finally the microprocessors were developed in 1971 so since this is not a course in engineering you know neither computer science nor electronics so we will not go into further details of all these concepts our idea is only to have some flair of these concepts so that when we are using the computer for designing we are aware of them then in 1976 the first 8 bit microcomputer was developed so Uh, going into the hardware part if you see you know it was in 1976 when the first microcomputer was developed and that was a 8 bit computer then the 16 bit microcomputers came up then the 32 bits microcomputers came up right and then since then if you can see you no know, there is a lot of development that has taken place in terms of hardware and as a student of design you know at this age you are aware of the various applications the various uses is that a computer is being employed for right and this is by dint of the various developments that have taken place in its design manufacturing application right so uh, you can see especially in the microprocessor technology storage devices memory input or output devices computation speed all that has taken a giant leap now if you look at the state of the computers 30 or 40 years back and if you look at the state of computers today uh, there is a huge shift if you just look at the mobiles they are micro computers which are so handy we can keep those computers in our palms and then use right and it is serving so many purposes right so and that is because so much of advance is have taken place in terms of manufacturing in terms of conceptualization right in terms of computing the display technology has also made significant advances from its bulky cathode ray tube to plasma panel and then lcd flat screen forms right if you look at your mobiles you know they have these lcd flat screen and even led flat screen forms and you can see that the compactness and the miniaturization is on the rise compactness means a single device serving so many purposes and mi miniaturization means uh, reduction of the size and you know, if you look at the earlier uh, computers they were so bulky in size but if you look at the computers now you know just like a mobile it is so small in size then if you look at the development of cad cam how it all emerged so in 1957 patrick j hanratty developed pronto and that was the first commercial numerical control programming system the nc programming system by which uh, the machine can do the manufacturing or the product development right so numerical control means that you develop some code in terms of numbers and you try to operate the machine with the help of those numbers then the interactive computer graphics icg was developed during the 1960s and interactive computer graphics means that you are able to interact with a computer 
right we are able to input some data and get some output from the data and we are able to manipulate the data right and then in 1963 sutherland wrote the computer program called the sketchpad and that is considered to be the ancestor of cad so from here the inception of cad has taken place when the first program called sketchpad was written by sutherland by late 1960s the term computer design was coined right and during 1970s graphics standards were introduced we'll talk about graphics standards so to begin with the companies developed their own uh, ways of uh, drawing and designing the models but when one computer has to interact with another computer one firm has to interact with another firm then some basic standards have to be developed and these are the graphics standards right and then the CAD CAM software development occurred at a very fast pace during the late 1970s and if you see now so many companies so many firms are developing the software and now the softwares are being developed for some special uh, purposes also right then by 1980s and 90s the CAD CAM was being used in almost every industry the software has been developed over the past three decades you know, for interactive drawing and drafting analysis visualization animation so all these are various applications so drawing and drafting would mean that simply generating the shape but analysis would mean that we are able to look into various aspects of the design we are able to analyze the data we are able to analyze it for its uh, functionality for its life for its usability for its strength strain failure modes all those things can be analyzed and then to visualize the product right one way could be that you actually make the product give it in the hands of the user and the user looks at it and then is able to visualize but now with the aid of computers we can visualize the product if you look at the uh, applications today people are able to visualize the whole house in which you know, they are going to live right there are so many softwares developed for it then animation like you can uh, make the models move just look like a real life you know, uh, prototype right so in this uh, course we'll mainly use the software called autocad and solidworks so autocad is developed by autodesk and solidworks is developed by desol systems which are these two software are prevalent in use but there's many more software like katia and sys you know so many softwares are there which are being used by the designers today now if you look at the computer as a participant in the design team so one thing is conceptual conceptualization <coughs> so conceptualization means that uh, you are able to develop a concept so of course the concept development is going to be done by the human being but the computer becomes an aid for the process of conceptualization so we can fetch so much of data from around we can have so much of information so that a single thought that i have can be assisted by the computer in developing the concept so if you look at the products that are being developed today the initiation of the concept took uh, place in some human being but slowly that concept got uh, further developed communicated right with the aid of computers so conceptualization phase you know, has application of computers to a large extent then in searching the data so we have search engines today whatever information that you want to have you can uh, interact with the computer if you look at the google search engine it is able to retrieve the data so fast right you just write something and you are able to get the information about that particular thing then in learning so with the aid of computers we are able to learn if you look at the virtual classes that are running today if you look at the videos that are available like this lecture is also going to be displayed in terms of a video right and uh, using that you are able to learn so many things right so people nowadays are learning uh, various things with the aid of computers then intelligence the human intelligence cannot be uh, to that extent as we are able to use the computer so we are able to think certain things we are able to think qualitatively but to aid that process of intelligence the computer has to have a huge role to play then information storage and retrieval so to store the information we uh, of course employ the computers and slowly if you see the storage capacity of the computers is on the rise with the miniaturization of the computers the sizes of the computers are going smaller as well as on the other hand the storage capacity of the computers is rising right then retrieval would mean that I am able to extract the data from the computer. So in terms of storing the information and retrieving the data, 
the computers are playing a huge role for the design team. And then to <coughs> enhance the analytical power as we discussed earlier. So, when we have to employ the intelligence, we have, when we have to in analyze some data, some design, then of course, the computer is going to be utilized. And then design iteration as we discussed in the previous lecture that design is an iterative process. No design is the final design and at every stage there is a possibility that you can go back improve upon the design and all the product that you see today right you can see the way the iterations are taking place the shapes sizes features they are changing day by day right so the depending upon the need of the customer depending upon the uh, problem that people are facing in terms of utilizing the product right so iterations are taking place so design iteration of course and that is done easily with the aid of computers if someone has to do the same kind of iteration manually it can be a difficult task to accomplish but with the aid of computers one is able to do it so easily and then prototyping prototyping means actually developing the product now there are so many ways of prototyping right but if you talk about rapid prototyping just by feeding the data in the computer and transferring the data to the rapid prototyping machine you are able to actually prototype the uh, model you are able to develop the product so with the aid of computers we are able to make the uh, product right just by dint of a good you know, error free model then uh, we will talk briefly about computer graphics so computer graphics it is studied under computer science and engineering so we are not going to discuss again this in detail but this is something that provides interaction between a designer and a computer right so if i have to interact with a computer what comes into play is the computer graphics so for for example if i am interacting with this computer with the help of this pointer or with the help of this uh, this pen and this pointer this is an example of computer graphics i am interacting with the computer in a similar manner when i am making a model on a computer then i am using some uh, I am using a mouse and the cursor is there and by clicking the mouse I am able to you know, activate the commands. So that is a kind of interaction that takes place between a designer and a computer. According to uh, Rogers and Adams, <coughs> computer graphics is the use of computers to define the uh, output, the store the output, manipulate it, interrogate you know, and present the pictorial output. So uh, to define the output that is the product. So, we need computers. Then to store the data again, we need the computers. To manipulate, that is to change the design, we need computers. To interrogate, like to fetch some data, to get some information or to feed some information, we again employ the computers. And there, uh, this computer graphics has a role to play, also for uh, producing the pictorial output. So, what are the basic elements of computer graphics? So, there are three basic elements one is modeling the second is rendering and the third is animation so what is modeling modeling is representing what to represent the shape has to be represented now the shape can be represented in two way in 2d or 3d so when i am making a line or a curve it is a 2d representation so for example if i am drawing this line it is a 2d representation right a line or a curve it is a 2d representation right. but when i am uh, having the three dimension of the product that becomes a 3D representation. So, when we were designing the product on a piece of paper with the use of a pen uh, and pencil, then we used to draw the curves and the uh, lines right. Now, when we are uh, feeding the data in a computer, we can actually make the 3D model of the product. And then we, when we are able to develop the product in three dimension, then you can process it. Processing would mean that you are able to feed in certain data, you, know, you are able to develop the manufacturing process uh, also in, uh, uh, in, in the subsequent processes. Then <coughs> rendering, so rendering implies shading, illumination, adding color, adding texture to make it like a real object. So if I have a 3D uh, model, then I can add shades to it. So for example, if I am standing here and a shadow is getting made on the back side, right so the same thing can be generated in a computer so you make let's say a machine part and you want to make it look real so the front part can be illuminated the rear part can be little shaded and the, the shadow can be created and there can be various ways of adding the rendering you can add color you can add texture for example if you are designing a house and you are 
communicating the design of the house to the customer then you can add colors to the walls you can add textures in various parts right so those kinds of things can be done you can uh, add some shade or shadows to the house then animation animation means providing movement a life like character so for example if i make the model of an ic engine and i want to show to the other how it works right so i can uh, use this animation technique to actually make the piston run actually make the engine run you know uh, just as a model right so with the movement that i can show the actual mechanism can be communicated and we all are uh, aware of the animation movies earlier if you see the animation was only 2d now the animation is 3d so these are various applications so we talked about these three applications modeling rendering and animation so if you look at the uh, illustration of this so in 2d we are able to display the product in terms of some 2d figure so this is a 2d figure now there is various ways so like one of the ways is orthographic projection so if a product is there in front of me right and the rays of sight are perpendicular to the plane of projection then the projection that takes place is called as orthographic projection so the same product which is there as a 3d can be displayed in terms of 2d so here uh, we can have various views we can have the front view we can have the side view we can have the top view and using multiple views we are able to display the product so this is of course very useful when you are actually producing the product because when you have to machine you have to look into the dimensions how much is to be cut to what depth it is to be cut right so uh, this is the 2d representation and you can see there are various features i have taken this from the website there are various features you know dimensions are shown here right the hatching is done here that shows that the material is there and by making sections of the solid you can show the internal features so this is the 2d representation but the same thing can be shown in terms of 3d also as you can see here and since this is just depicted on the screen so it appears again as a 2d but ultimately if you see in the modeling software this appears like a 3d model and you can look at the model from various uh, angles rotate it manipulate it right stretch it compress it all those possibilities are there and a similar example is given here so this is the 3d representation then comes rendering so you can see as we talked about how you can add various effects so like there is a mouse here right i have taken this from uh, the site of keyshot which is a rendering software and you can see how beautiful it has been made to look at using the rendering process how illumination has been added right similarly there is a pin here and you can see how the color has been added how illumination has been added some shade has been added here now if you are trying to communicate your idea of the product to the customer right or to the design team and if you add these features your communication becomes more effective one is able to feel the object how it will look like if you look here the reflection is also shown the specs are here right the way the shadow is getting made how the you know, image is getting made the reflection is getting made all these things can be shown similarly you can see the shadow getting made here isn't it and in fact you can combine rendering and animation so you can make the same object move in terms of a model only and then you can add these kinds of effects so that is always possible so this is rendering and this is animation i have just taken this uh, uh, from youtube there is a video developed by auto tech labs so this shows the working of an ic engine right it is a four cylinder ic engine and the firing order has been shown in what order the firing does take place and if you make it move uh, then the actual process gets displayed now if you have to explain about ic engines to a student and you use this kind of animation everything gets communicated so easily without this animation communication would have been so difficult but just by showing this video to the other you are able to communicate so whenever you are making some mechanism by using animation you can display the actual working of the product so this is the 
il illustration of animation and I hope you are aware of the animation so many cartoon movies you can see earlier the animation used to be 2D but now we have animation in 3D also and when you have this virtual reality or augmented reality into picture then uh, you can even uh, develop some kind of uh, virtual image of the product as if you are using it as if you are inside it is not it. Going further computer about computer graphics it is an essential component of the computer aided manufacturing wherein graphical data of the object is converted into prototyping data to operate a CNC machine or a rapid prototyping machine for the production of the component. So, it is a very essential component of the CAM computer manufacturing. So, you have some graphical data of the object and that is converted to some form of data which can be fed to the CNC machine or to the rapid prototyping machine to actually develop the product. And there are two primary constituents of the computer graphics one is the hardware and the other is software right. So, we will have a brief look about the various kinds of hardware that are employed and the software that are employed. So, going about the graphic systems and hardware. So, hardware comprise the input and the display or the output devices. So, there are two kinds of devices input devices and the display devices which can also be called as the output devices right. So, numerous types of graphic systems are in use. Uh, to begin with, uh, we will talk about mainframe based systems which use a large mainframe computer on which the software which is usually a huge code requiring a large space for storage is installed. So, these are huge computers mainframe based systems right, sometimes very huge in size also and there is a huge capacity for storage. But then there are mini computers or workstations which are based uh, workstation based systems which are smaller in scale than the mainframe systems with a limited number of display and input devices right and both the systems employ one to many interface wherein more than one designer can interact with the computer. So, if you look at the design team we will see that there is a team of you know, let us say 10 or 20 people working together on a single product on various computers and the data is being fetched and inter, uh, the interaction is taking, with, uh, taking place with either some mainframe based system or some mini computer. But on the contrary, if you look at the micro computers like with the personal computer, the PC, they allow one to one interaction. So, your laptop allows one to one interaction, the computer that you are using in your house allows one to one interaction. But if you look at the search engines, right, so many people are interacting with that system, that with that hardware at a time. So, many people are fetching data or inputting some data there, is not it? So, they will be mainframe based systems or just like uh, mini computer, right. If you look at the input devices, so the keyboard and the mouse are the primary input devices. So, like uh, you have seen a keyboard, so there are some letters available there, we will show a picture of that also and you just press the keys and the data gets fed and the mouse is there by moving the mouse you are able to move the cursor. So, in a more involved primary environment uh, digitizer also known as a graphics tablet or drawing tablet or drawing pad or digital drawing tablet or pen tablet or digital art board or joysticks you know, these are also used. So, keyboard and the mouse are the primary devices, but again when you are going to employ the computer for designing or many a times for uh, gaming or other such applications then you have these various kinds of things in use and particularly for sketching you know, these tablets are very much in use and they are known by various names either tablets or drawing pads or drawing tablets or pen tablet right. And then we have joysticks, joysticks are like levers right or some balls which can be used to move the mouse. Then track balls and input dials are there <coughs> which are used to produce the complex models. Then we have data gloves, image scanners, touch screens, light pens and slowly these kinds of devices are getting more and more developed and sophisticated. So, like when virtual reality or augmented reality is being used right. So, uh, to have this kind of uh, image to have this kind of feel right various other kinds of devices can be used. Scanners are used to digitize and input a two dimensional photographic data or text for computer storage or processing. So, scanners like the 2D scanners we have seen already if you have to scan a paper you use a scanner and when you input some command again through computer graphics right you are able to get the image of the whole document. 
so these are various input devices you know you must be acquainted with keyboard and mouse we will look into uh, literally i will uh, explain about them so what is a graphics tablet what is a joystick what are track balls what are input dials so these are various uh, illustrations so there are various kinds of digitizers you can see a digitizer here just by using a pen and a screen you are able to do this you know? this is also digitizer this is also digitizer this is something which is easily available on the shops also very low in price and children use this for drawing and sketching and then we have the joysticks here you can see uh, the lever is available here you know? and uh, different uh, kinds of designs are available right just like use a lever in a car a similar kind of thing is available here right to uh, take you around then we have the track balls and the space balls here so there are some balls available by rolling over rolling your fingers over the balls you can move the cursor then there are input dials this is an input dial this is also kind of input device the light pens are here see these are illustration for the various kinds of products which are used then the data gloves okay so you just uh, if you write these words on youtube you can see applications of these just because of copyright issue i have not brought all those videos here but you can use these technical terms and just input these terms in the youtube and you can see how they are employed how they are utilized in scanners so this is a 2d scanner we'll talk about 3d scanner also so input devices a 3d coordinate measuring machine is a multi degree of freedom precision robotic arm attached to the computer and many non contact methods are also employed for data acquisition which can be optical acoustic or magnetic so a 3d coordinate measuring machine is where we have a lobe which touches the object at various points and the coordinates are fetched and by getting the coordinates at various points on the object we are able to decide or we are able to model the shape of the object so this is a tactile method a method in which the lobe is actually touching the product but there could be non contact non tactile methods like optical using light acoustic using sound waves magnetic using magnetic field so here we have a coordinate measuring machine so here we have this lobe and this will touch upon the product and the coordinates will be captured and then by capturing the coordinates the product will be modeled but here we have this optical 3d scanner so this 3d scanner it is a hand held scanner you just hold it in hands and rotate over an object and the model get generated then uh, certain other input devices like the non contact methods the optical acoustic and magnetic so optical we talked so this is not a handheld this is also a scanner so scanner can be held <coughs> handheld or even placed on a tripod then here we have the acoustic method so sound waves are coming and by uh, capturing the data from the sound waves you are able to uh, measure the shape and size of the object and then we have magnetic field measurements here like if you see the mri or ct scan methods they are all magnetic field measurements then uh, the display devices so the cathode ray tube C crt monitor is here is in traditional computer so if you look at the earlier computers right they used to have crt monitors then the color crt monitors came into picture and then we have liquid crystal display lcd screens in use today then you have led screens uh, today in use which display the model then there can be direct view storage tubes dvst used to store the picture information of a charge distribution behind the phosphor coated screen then we have plasma displays a type of flat panel display using uh, tiny plasma cells and then the 3d display which is capable of bringing the depth perception to the viewer used to 3d gaming and 3d tvs right so these are illustrations so here we have the crt monitor these are the lcd and ld monitors our television sets are something similar to that then the dvst monitor and then the plasma display screen so these are various ways in which the data can be displayed if you look at the output devices then we have printers and plotters so this can be 2d devices so 2d device if you see the dot matrix printer so that device which prints the design uh, using some dots so there is a uh, series of dots right so the earlier printers if you see they used to be dot matrix printers and then the inkjet printer came so this dot matrix printer if you remember they print with a clicking sound these inkjet print uh, printers uh, where 
jets of ink are spread and the printing takes place then we have laser printers thermal printers these are generally used by the uh, printing presses then the pen and ink printers of the flat bed drum pinch roller types like these are various kinds of printers so a printer is an external hardware output device that takes the electronic data stored on a computer or any other storage device and generates a hard copy of the data so a plotter is an output device commonly used for cad applications to input large vector designs for example if you look at the architectural designs right the big layouts that are made for the city planning right or if you are planning for a colony so all those big printouts are generally done on the plotters and these are the output devices so if you look at the 3d printers you know, there are three kinds of 3d printers the liquid based solid based and powder based so we'll talk about them in detail these are just illustrations so there are various kinds of printers so this is an example of a liquid based printer this is an example of a solid based printer and you can see how complicated shapes can be made made using the shape using these kinds of 3d printers so this was all that i had to discuss in this part of the lecture uh, about this rapid prototyping process and the 3d printers we'll again talk in detail this was just to give you a flair of the various things which are involved in terms of inputting and outputting the data right so thank you all